Hi guys, this is part two of V neck cardigan tutorial. And if you haven't watched the part one, please go to my description box. I will put the uh, the link for part one. So go watch that video first. Let's get started. In the uh, part one video, I talk about making a plan, cast on, rib, pocket, and knitting body part. Now let's move on to the neck shape and arm opening. Again, if you haven't watched the uh, part one, you gotta go and check that out first. So now I knit pocket and knit few rows after the pocket. Start V shape. I am going to use right side body blue and left side very pink. So it's easy for you to see what I'm doing because it's going to be a little bit busy because you have to create the V shape and also arm opening as well. By the way, the way I wrote the pattern, some people think it's a little bit complicated, but it's not because everybody has different plan. So I have to break my pattern down. So even if you have different plan than me, you don't really have to worry about it. Anyway, let's move on. VRR1, which means V neck right side, row number one. Knit one and then SSK. I told you I am going to decrease one stitch every four rows. So this is the first decrease for my V neck right side. And after SSK, knit until five stitch before the side marker. And remember, I am going to create the arm opening same time with v-neck so your plan is different than mine like okay i'm gonna you know uh, create the arm opening later on you just skip this and then whenever you're ready you do exactly same thing anyway i am going to bind five stitch off before the marker and then bind another five stitch off after the marker. So now I have five stitch left before the marker. So knit, that's the fifth one, right? And you know, I'm trying to say, if you try to bind the fifth one, You have to knit one more. Don't bind the uh, sixth stitch off. There you go. I just bind fifth one off. And this is four, three, two. And there's no more stitch because there's the uh, marker, right? However, one more stitch to bind off, which is that one. So what do you have to do? Remove the marker, knit one, and bind last one. 
the stitch on the right side that's belong to back piece which you're going to bind off anyway so now first bind off second bind off third fourth and that's the fifth one so one more so total of 10 stitch I bind off this is the start for arm opening again if you're not ready for the arm opening skip this part and whenever you're ready you gotta do this and now you entered back piece of the cardigan so knit back piece until five stitch before the other side of the marker and you do exactly same thing so here comes the other side and you do exactly same thing bind five stitch for the back piece and after the side marker you have to bind five stitch for the other side of the front piece total of 10 but okay this breakdown for the uh, arm decreasing depend on your plan so some people may be less some people has more bind off that you have to do so the number of the bind off is up to you if you're needing exactly same as mine this is the number you have to you know bind off you know what i'm saying and again maybe first time you watch this it's a little bit complicated but if you watch maybe a couple more times with my written pattern should be okay anyway i bind last one stitch off and i transfer one stitch to front because that belong to front piece and then now use the uh, scrap yarn to transfer all the back stitch onto scrap yarn because i am going to knit front piece first and then start knitting for back piece i can actually knit you know three piece at the same time two front piece and back piece but that's too confusing for you so i am going to knit two piece front together i mean you know at the same time but back piece later on anyway do you remember i haven't Finish the uh, left side of the uh, the front piece so that stitch is the one you know I transferred after I bind off so I already need that one so starting from the uh, the second stitch just knit until last three stitch and this time I want to decrease right shifting so knit two together so left front you have to use knit two together and knit one so v l r means v neck left side row one so it's kind of done with pink color because as I told you I am going to use blue yarn for my right side of the front and very pink for left side of the front piece and again I am going to knit those two front piece at the same time so it's easier maybe for you to understand anyway let's move on now two different 
ball of yarn two different color and I just finished the uh, v-neck left side row number one so turn around and start with v-neck left side row number two all pearl and right side of the front piece same all pearl so I'm using the uh, very pink I'm gonna just call it pink from now on because the other pink it won't I won't use so anyway V V neck left and right row number two or pearl no decreasing no bind off no nothing so just pearl until the end okay here comes end of left side done so now what do I have to do I said I am going to knit two front piece at the same time you can actually you know finish left side first and then you know move on to right side you can do that if it's too much but I am going to knit two pieces at the same time because that will be easier later on so pull the uh, needle leave the uh, the pink yarn there and then just start knitting with different color which is blue this side just pretend nothing happened and you just have to be careful you know about the yarn will be all tangled but that's about it you can untangle whenever you finish the row you know every end of the row make sure it's not tangled that's about it so again the right side of your front piece all pearl no decreasing no nothing okay so let's move on to VRR3 v-neck right side row number three which is easy because no decreasing for v-neck again one stitch decrease every four rows and decreasing on row number one however I have to decrease arm side so my pattern says knit until arm you don't understand what that means right so whenever it says arm you gotta go check my arm pattern okay so don't knit until the end because there is interaction there so arm right side row number one after the bind off okay so the v-neck after the v-neck knit until last six stitch so please do not get confused here v-neck means I did something you know following my v-neck pattern then after that you know which was actually nothing really just knit right so knit until last six stitch so another word if you don't start arm opening yet you just knit straight you know what I'm saying anyway my pattern at the same time so this is arm opening row number one and then this time I have to decrease kind of right shifting so I am going to use need to together and 
I have to decrease three stitch, so knit two together three times. There we go. That's the second decrease for arm opening. And skip the back piece, come around for left side arm decreasing. I just did the knit two together, right? And this is, that's the uh, v-neck side. I can tell, right, because the pocket, and this is the arm opening side. So I have to decrease three stitch first and left shifting. So I am going to use SSK technique. SSK three times because I'm going to decrease three stitch for arm opening, same as the other side. Three. And then knit until v-neck. Knit, knit until v-neck means knit until close to the v-neck and check the v-neck instruction if there is any but the v-neck this is row number four for v-neck so i'm not gonna do anything okay so again i want to make sure about v-neck right side blue left side pink row number one for blue is knit first one and then SSK. This is row number one. So one decrease, right? And then after that, all knit. And the other side, which is the pink left side, just knit until last three stitch. And last three stitch, knit two together first and knit one. This is the V neck decreasing rule. Forget about the arm right now. And row number two, three, four for V neck. Row number two, all pearl. Row number three, all knit. And row number four, all pearl. And you just have to repeat row number one to row number four until half of your back neck. And for the arm opening, the prep was the bind off because bind quite a bit of stitch off. So I didn't use the, uh, the decreasing technique. For me, five stitch each, so 10 stitch for right side and 10 stitch for left side. And right side with blue, use knit two together to decrease and left with pink use ssk and follow by your pattern this is very important so you really have to know what is your plan and which side you're knitting i'm doing ssk because right side blue and I just create the uh, another V shape, right? So this is row number one. However, the arm side is not the row number one. I decreased three stitch on last right side. So this time I am going to decrease two stitch. And do you remember the right blue side i have to use the uh, knit two together technique to decrease the uh, stitch so knit until four stitch last four stitch and then knit two together two times 
So I'm just showing you this is my right side. You know what I'm saying? When you wear the jacket, which side is that? You know what I'm saying? So sometimes people get confused because when you're looking at the project, this side looks like a left side, right? But I'm always, always talking about my side, your side, if you wear that jacket. You know what I'm saying? So you really have to be very careful, especially if you're using same color of yarn, you definitely get confused. So you can use, you know, the clip to, you know, distinguish which is which, stuff like that. And uh, the key for success is write it down. Write it down, all your plan. I'm actually showing you knit two together. Knit two together creates the uh, right shift decrease. This is the reason why I have to use knit two together this side. But the, the other side, the uh, arm opening has to create left shifting. So if left shifting decrease, you have to use SSK. So here comes this left side. This is already arm decreasing. So SSK two times. One. This creates the uh, left shift decrease. And two. And then knit all the way. And this is the uh, row number one for B, right? So you have to decrease at the very end. After this, you just have to follow my written instruction. Whenever it's done for the uh, arm opening, you just stop. No more decreasing. However, the V neck, you just follow my instruction, which is decrease one stitch every four rows, which is first row you have to decrease until when you hit 12 stitch left for shoulder. Or another word, soon as you decrease 21 stitch for v-neck either way i use marker i put the uh, clip on marker and that's actually 12 stitch for shoulder so whenever i hit the uh, marker that's the end of v-neck so this is last row number one so no more decreasing another word i need 81 rows so i am going to transfer all the shoulder stitch onto holder and the other side as well now you have to knit back piece. There you go. This is the last row number one. So knit until last three stitch. And this is my left side of the front. So you have to do knit two together to create right shifting decrease there we go knit two together and knit one now i only have 12 stitch for shoulder in other words again i knit 81 row which is half of my neck stitch count times four minus three so 21 times four minus three 81 then done for the uh, front piece. Let's 
move on to back piece. So back piece, I am going to use different color of yarn. So I am going to cut the yarn. Now you transfer all the back stitch onto needle. And by the way, back piece is quite easy, except top part. Anyway, take your time to transfer all the back stitch onto needle. And if you need, you have to count the stitch number. Back piece, row number one, you have to do the, uh, you know, arm opening as well, right? I already bind the uh, five stitch off. So starting with right side, not the wrong side, knitting side. So SSK three times because it's going to be left shifting because it's uh, now back piece. You know what I'm saying? So SSK three times and knit until last six stitch and then knit two together times three. Do you remember I bind off five stitch total of 10 next decreasing is three stitch then next two then one decrease five times total of 15 each side. You know what I'm saying? So super easy but don't mix it up and make sure which side you're shifting to decrease if you remember that way you probably get don't get confused and all the uh, even number of the row should be all pearl so as i mentioned Please follow my written instruction to finish to create the, uh, the arm opening. This is easy because there's no v-neck shape or anything. So you can focus on the arm opening, right? And one more important thing for back piece is you have to count rows. Do you remember how many rows I needed it for front? 81 rows. So back piece, I have to knit total of 81 rows. However, you have to stop nine rows before 81 rows. And here comes, I needed it quite a bit. I'm just showing you the uh, arm opening decreasing for back piece slowly. Same as, you know, the front piece, right? And then after that, just, you know, uh, keep knitting, stock net stitch, knit on the right side and purl on the wrong side. And I believe I stop right on the 73 rows, row 73. Because as I said, you know, you have to stop nine rows before your finish row. For me, 81 is my target row, right? So you have to kind of count backwards. 81, 80, 79, da, da, da. And my nine row before the target is 73. If you get confused, you have to write it down. And which is the ninth row from the target, right? For me, row 73 that's my target number and i'm actually counting backwards right now to make sure you know ninth row should be row number 73 anyway and why you have to stop ninth row before the target row that's because i have to create a little bit of the uh, the neck shape behind the uh, the the neck also, I would like to do the uh, short row 
to create the little carb for the shoulder. And I need to do those two things within nine rows. So after I create the back of the neck, also the short row for the shoulder, I consume nine rows. So if you knit 81 row and then start creating the, uh, the back of the uh, neck and short row, it's going to be higher than front piece. That's why you have to stop. And if you make a mistake, one or two rows, don't worry about it. But nine row, that's not good. Anyway, I want you to add two shoulder markers. And my target shoulder stitch count is 12. However, you have to add two additional because those two additional stitch I need be to create the uh, back of the uh, neck shape. So that shoulder count, 12 plus two. So I have a 14 stitch now and the other side as well. But I will end it up make it 12 because I have only 12 stitch for the front shoulder, right? So I am going to decrease two stitch there to create the back of the neck shape. And I want you to see what I'm doing and you will understand. This is a prep for back of the neck and shoulder show row. Okay, I just want to make sure one more time. On row number 73, ninth row before the finish, I am going to knit straight. And then back of the next stitch, I am going to transfer onto stitch holder or scrap yarn. So start knitting. This is row number 73 until second marker. You have to knit first and then transfer. Okay, so knit. And this ninth row before finish, everybody same thing. All right, short row for the uh, shoulder part, everybody same. You need eight rows, but this is preparation. So this is ninth row. For me, row number 73. Anyway, so I knit from beginning to second marker, right? So now you transfer back of the next stitch before you knit until the end. All right? And after you transfer, okay, I keep knitting. So again, 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 how many stitch you should have for the shoulder? For me, 12 plus two, always, always two extra because I would like to decrease to create the uh, little carve for back of my neck. So as you can see, stitch holder is kind of too rigid. So after I knit this row, I am actually going to change to scrap yarn. So I'll tell you, use scrap yarn. There we go. So it's more flexible, right? Easy. I am going to keep that back of the next stitch for now. And let's move on to shoulder, which means starting show row for shoulder again. I am going to start on left side. There's no big reason, but the left side starting on knitting side, which is right side. 
So a little bit easier. So first of all, I have to create the back of the neck, you know, decreasing, right? And then at the same time, I am going to use short row. So inside part is a little bit higher than outside shoulder. And I am going to show you step by step, so don't worry about it. So left side shoulder, SSK. This is not part of the short row. This is creating the curve for back of the neck. That's why I add two stitch extra. So SSK, I decrease one stitch there. And I am going to decrease one more later, not now. So one stitch decrease, then need two. Everybody same. So follow my instruction here. Need two. Then yarn front slip one purl wise and yarn back i'm doing wrap and turn so i wrap one stitch there then transfer one stitch back that's the wrap stitch then turn the project Row number two, all pearl. That's it. And you just have to actually repeat, but I am going to do step by step. So after you pearl, turn around. Now we're facing on right side again, knitting side. And again, row three, let's create the back of the neck slope. So SSK. This is last SSK. Nothing to do with short row. And this is last SSK again. Because I, I, I told you to add two extra and I just decreased two stitch now. So no more SSK. So now short row. Knit until the wrap. And wrap stitch is one stitch before the bit gap. Here it comes. So knit one and right there. That's the wrap you I just made. And pick up that wrap. Then pick up another stitch, which is original. Two stitch, just like a SSK. There we go. So slow. And Put the left needle back, then knit two together. This is an wrap. Then knit two. There we go again. Now I am going to wrap yarn front, slip one purl, then yarn back. Can you see? I just did wrap, transfer that stitch back, and turn around, then purl until the end. This is row number four. After you purl until the end, turn around. Now row number five. Again, I said no more SSK, right? Because I decrease two. So now I have a 12 stitch on the needle. Anyway, knit until wrap stitch, which is one stitch before the big gap. So knit, knit, knit. And there we go. This is the wrap stitch. Pick up the uh, wrap and then pick up one more knit wise. Put the left needle in and knit two together. This is unwrap and knit two. One more, yarn front, 
slip one purl wise, yarn back, then transfer slip stitch back, then turn around. Row number six, or purl. Two more rows. Or purl. Here comes row number seven. Row number seven, you just have to unwrap. That's about it. Knit until wrap stitch. So wrap stitch, which is one stitch before the gap. Here comes, pick up and pick original one and knit it together. And after this, just knit till the end. And this is row number seven, right? I need to knit one more row to make it 81 row. Oh no, I am not going to wrap. There you go. Good and turn around can you see a little bit you know little slope i'll show you later okay so again this is not finished i have to knit on row 81 same as front piece right and this is it for left side of the uh, shoulder and I just want to tell you one thing if you don't want to do the uh, short row for the uh, shoulder fine um, you can just uh, knit after 2 SSK you know what I'm saying you know knit just straight but you need to create some sort of the uh, carb for back of your neck so keep the uh, ssk twice and skip the uh, short row but you have to knit eight rows after the preparation you know what i'm saying but it's not that you know difficult anyway uh, after the uh, left side shoulder done transfer onto the uh, stitch holder I have to you know connect front and back together later so keep the uh, original stitch now right side of the uh, shoulder do you remember what I told you before I start the uh, left side start from inside the you know close to next side right so for the uh, right side same thing i have to start from the uh, next side yeah that side which means i can't start on knitting side you know right side that's right i have to start on wrong side that's starting from the uh, next side right so right side shoulder short row starts row number one wrong side obviously so purl two together this is nothing to do with the uh, short row this is the uh, creating of the uh, back of the uh, neck right and purl two then wrap and turn yarn back slip one purl wise then yarn front now i just wrap one stitch and transfer stitch back right then turn around row number two now all knit because you're facing to right side so you know it's a little bit different but not too much. 
just the、uh, you know the side you're facing to that that's it so you have to change the、uh, knitting stitch right anyway row number three wrong side again pro two together again you have to decrease two stitch because you add two extra so pro until wrap stitch which means pro one and then here comes this is the、uh, wrap stitch right The stitch before the gap. So back of the、uh, wrap stitch, grab the、uh, wrap like that. Can you see? So you have to look at the、uh, knitting side. So pick up the、uh, wrap and hook onto left needle, then With the original stitch, purl two together. This is unwrap. Then purl two, then wrap is coming. Yarn back, slip one purl wise, yarn front, then slip one stitch back. So you just made the、uh, wrap. I'm sorry, you can't really see, but turn around. Now, row number four is all knit because you're now facing to right side. And then turn around, row number five, wrong side again. You're not decreasing any stitch because you already decreased two stitch, so purl. Until wrap stitch, which is one stitch before the gap. Here comes, and now you're looking at the back right side and pick up the wrap, hook onto left needle, then purl two together. And purl two and Wrap, yarn back, slip one purl wise, yarn front, transfer slip stitch back, then turn. Row number six, right side, all knit. Almost there. Two more rows to go. Lately, in my tutorial, I'm using this short row technique. So, if you're watching a lot of my video, you probably get used to it, right? But even if this is your first time, don't worry, this is super easy. Anyway, row number seven purl until wrap. Wrap stitch, which means one stitch before the gap. Then let's do the unwrap. And you already know. How to do unwrap now? It's a little bit awkward because you have to kind of turn around and look kind of, you know, behind, right? So pick up the wrap stitch from the behind knitting side and hook onto left needle and purl two together. And this is it. You're not going to do any more wrapping. So purl until the end and turn again. This is row number eight, right side, all knit. So, right side of the shoulder short row, this is end of it. And now I'm going to connect back shoulder and front shoulder to together. And I am not sewing them, I am going to Use purl two together. First of all, put right side two together, front piece and back piece, and the other side, same thing. So you have to turn inside out. Inside part, which is purl side, is now outside. You know what I'm saying? Right side two together. 
bowls side. One with the front piece, one with the back piece. And then now you will connect those two together. Now you get it, right? You know, both I have 12 stitch. So now I am going to do purl two together, then bind off. So let's see. The back of stitch, hook onto front needle, well, stitch holder, and then purl two together there. It's kind of awkward because I'm using the, uh, you know, stitch holder. I'm so lazy. I'm sorry. There you go. And then one more, right? And this time I just straight to the, uh, you know, the purl two together. Put the needle in to both stitch and purl two together, right? And then bind off. It's really awkward. Yeah, that's right. I close the uh, stitch holder, you know, and make sure not to, you know, uh, drop any stitch off, right? So, you know, you sh I should have changed to the uh, needle, but I, I was so lazy. Sometimes, you know, I become so lazy. I don't know why. Bad habit. There we go. And then bind off. So this is just a regular bind off, right? But you have to do purl two together to connect front and back first. That's it. There you go. That's the end of bind off. There we go. I didn't sew it. And you do same thing for the other side. And now we can move on to sleeve. You know what I'm saying? Almost done. Almost. Because sleeve is so easy. There we go. Both attached. And I already knit one sleeve, as you can see. There we go. So let's make a plan. First of all, I want you to kind of make a plan how long you want the length, right? And how many stitch you want to decrease, if you want to decrease any. You know, for me, of course, because, you know, the 11 inch height, right? So it's going to be huge. So I decide maybe I'm going to knit 20 inch from the uh, shoulder to you know, end of the uh, sleeve. And I am going to decrease two stitch every five rows because my five row is little over half inch, right? So I can, what, um, decrease 40 times, 40 times two stitch is 80. That's that's actually a good number because when I pick up the uh, the stitch around the uh, sleeve, I need up 134 stitch minus 80 stitch, which is 54. That's still big, right? And I was thinking to create the uh, balloon sleeve, so this is good. And I'm actually telling you. Again, I started the, uh, the arm opening at the same time of the uh, V neck shape, right? So again, if you don't want this big sleeve, you have to change your plan, okay? Start the uh, V neck way earlier. And whenever you think, you know, this is good enough for the, uh, the sleeve, big enough or small enough, 
that's the time you want to, you know, bind off and create your arm opening. Look at that, you know, my arm opening is huge. Anyway, knit around. And I started at the very bottom of the uh, armpit because that's the part you can hide, right? So, and that's the, the place I am going to decrease. So, you should start in the center of bind off. I bind off 10 at the very beginning, right? Do you remember? So, you know, 5 and 5, I started there. And how did I knit up? Knit four stitch straight, you know, side by side, and then one stitch skip. So knit four, and then skip one, and knit four up. And sometimes it's really hard to knit up. If you have the uh, crochet hook, you can do that too. You know, put the crochet hook and grab the uh, yarn and hook onto right needle. And I just knit up four, right? So next stitch, I am going to skip. Yeah, one, two, three, four. And then right there, I am going to skip. So next, next stitch, I am going to knit up. The reason why I did this, that's because I don't want stitch kind of jammed up. You know, I don't want to knit up too many and kind of wavy. However, if you knit up too less, you, you know, the stitch pulling each other. So it's not good. And if the stitch each other pulling, which means it creates the uh, little gap and hole. So you really have to be careful. So knit four and then one skip, then knit four. That's very reasonable. All right? And do you know what? I don't like seaming. And next thing I don't like is knitting up. I don't know why. I'm not really good at it. Maybe I'm not patient enough. But, you know, um, if you're knitting from the bottom to top, I guess, you know, the seaming and knitting up is pretty much mandatory, right? That's why I usually knit from top. But, you know, not much I can do. I really wanted to knit the, uh, you know, diagonal pocket. So I guess I have to deal with it. And, you know, I did successfully. So the, the key point is you have to be patient. And, um, You have to count stitch number because you want to have same number as the other side. Okay? Anyway, I knit up and there you go. I am going to knit row number one to row number four. I'm going to show you how to decrease. Do you remember my plan? My plan is every five row, I am going to decrease two stitch. So row number five, every row number five, I am going to decrease two stitch. Here comes, this is end of row number four. And soon as you start knitting row number five, 
you decrease one right away. So slide the begin marker. This is row number five. Knit one and then knit two together. That's it. And knit until last three stitch before the begin marker. And here comes end of row number five. I said knit until last three before the begin marker, right? And yarn back, slip one purl wise, knit one, and PSSO. Then knit one. You can use the uh, SSK technique here. But I don't know why I like this decreasing. Looks a little bit more um, better stitch. You know, better look. Anyway, so repeat row number one and row number five until your desired length. Obviously, if this is your first sleeve, you have to count how many rows you knit because you want to knit same as the other one, right? Pretty much it. Sleeve is so easy. And I actually changed the color at the end. And I guess um, when I finish, I have 72 stitch left. I was supposed to, you know, uh, have 50 something left, but I guess I stopped earlier than I thought. Anyway, and I did knit two together one round to make it half of the uh, stitch, which is 36. 36 stitches enough for my wrist. So you really have to think, okay? If 36 is um, too small, so you really have to think, N don't do the uh, knit two together, you know, one round. Like knit one, repeat of knit one and knit two together, repeat of knit one and knit two together, stuff like that. So you really have to, you know, think how many stitch you want to decrease and change the uh, the needle to 3.5 from 4 after you know I decrease now I have the uh, 36 stitch which is multiple of 4 so the rib should be repeat of knit 2 and purl 2 Good, multiple of four stitch count, right? So I don't really have to adjust the number anymore. So again, sleeve, knit with the uh, decreasing if you want to decrease, and then count how many stitch you have left, and then decide how many stitch you want to decrease more. And then make a rib. Now I am going to show you the uh, stretchy cast off. For the uh, sleeve, you should use the uh, stretchy cast off technique because you don't want a tight wrist. So anyway, purl two together with the uh, tapestry needle. Don't drop the uh, stitch off yet. I'm using way long, you know, cable, so it's all tangled. There you go. Purl two together, and now knit first one. Then drop the uh, one stitch off. And don't pull too hard. If you pull too hard, it won't be stretchy. And then knit two together again. Do not drop the uh, any stitch off, and knit one. Then drop the uh, stitch off. 
and you just have to repeat. Pro two together, knit one, then drop the stitch. That's about it. And you do exactly the same thing for the other side. So now, two sleeves are done. Good. Finally, you can do color, buttonhole, rib, whatever you want to call. And again, you have to knit up. And the rules are same. Knit four stitch up side by side and then one skip and then knit four up side by side. Same. And then should be multiple of four plus two because when you look at the uh, uh, rib on right side, I want to start with knit two and end with knit two. But if you don't really care, it you just, you know, um, knit up, you know, multiple four. That's fine. I really hated knitting up, but take your time. Take your time. This is my advice to you. Here comes the pocket part. Pocket part, there's two fabric. Top part, pocket. Second part, layer, the body part. And you have to put the needle through two layers like that and then knit up. This is closing the uh, pocket section too. That's why I told you, you don't have to sew them because you will close with this buttonhole rib, right? The difficult part is I don't, you know, want you to pull um, either side of the uh, layer. I want you to use same stitch. Otherwise, you know, the pocket kind of, you know, pocket is not going to be straight. You know what I'm saying? Here comes my crochet hook. Put the crochet hook into two layers and grab the, uh, the yarn and pull through. Then hook onto right needle. The crochet hook makes knitting up so easy for me. One more tip. I actually put the uh, marker here and there, you know, um, where the, uh, the V neck starts and uh, shoulder part, stuff like that. And then make sure I have a same stitch count, right side and left side. Because, you know, if I have more stitch count on right side and less on left side, the rib looks weird. So it has to be same number. And this is back of my neck. I have the, uh, the stitch on the uh, scrap yarn, right? So I transfer 
to the needle and now you have to knit straight. This is kind of relief, you know. So I always try to keep the original stitch as much as I can because I want to be lazy. So anyway, so start kneading up until the back of the neck original. Then you have to transfer the, uh, the original stitch back onto the left needle and then knit straight down. Then after the back of the neck stitch, you start knitting up again. There we go. And then now you have to make a plan again. I already know my plan. I am going to knit five rows, the rib, and I'm starting on the wrong side. So repeat off, purl two, knit two, until last two, then purl two at the end. This is wrong side, right? And from the, uh, the second row, you just knit over knit and purl over purl stitch. And I knit five rows. Then row number six and seven, I create the uh, buttonhole. Then I keep knitting the uh, rib next five rows so total of 12 rows i knit for the uh, buttonhole color rib whatever it costs because i really wanted to add a big chunky button that's why i need bigger rib so again From the second row, you just have to knit over knit stitch and purl over purl stitch. So every time, if you're uh, knitting rib, you uh, row number one is the key. You don't want to ruin your rib. So row number one, you have to focus. And then after that, you just follow the, uh, the, the stitch you made. And when you're knitting, you have to think, you know, how many, you know, the rib row you want to knit. And then in the center of the, uh, the, the rib, you have to create the uh, buttonhole, right? So again, I knitted it five rows. And next two rows, I am going to make the uh, buttonhole. So two row buttonhole super easy the first row bind off and second row add new cast that's it that's about it so super easy so row number six for the rib you know knit over knit purl over purl stitch and whenever i have the uh, you know the clip marker that's where i create the uh, buttonhole. So first of all, you have to kind of decide where you want to put the uh, buttonhole. So at the very bottom, I decide, okay, uh, two, one there, right? And I am going to use two stitch to create the uh, buttonhole because like I said, I was thinking to put the uh, big button right so one stitch buttonhole is too small so but three is too big you know if you create the uh, the bigger buttonhole it's going to be too loose so i am going to use two stitch to create the uh, buttonhole so i'll show you how right so i'm just making sure you know this is Good, you know, too low or not too low or anything like that. You just have to make sure about, about it. So, first of all, this is right side. So, need two, right? And then here comes the, uh, the marker. Remove the marker and bind off. 
and next two stitches purl so purl two then one stitch bind off and I said I'm going to use two stitch right so that's the first one and then second one you have to knit because it was knit stitch next right and then second bind off so I bind off two there and then keep knitting knit over knit and purl over purl until next buttonhole marker and you do exactly same thing easy isn't it I'll show you one more time and I decide I am going to add button right on the uh, the purl stitch because that way you know I can put the uh, button kind of evenly right so remove the marker and then it's a purl so purl two and bind first one and second one you have to bind off but you have to knit first there you go then bind off and you have to do rest of them and then just keep knitting until the other side and then come back and this is coming back you're now facing to wrong side and then close to the uh, buttonhole which I just bind off so this is the uh, bind off row number two you just you know keep knitting the rib until the gap because I just bind off two stitch every time right so there's a gap there we go so what do you have to do add two new cast on there on top of where you bind off easy one and two then after that pretend nothing happened and keep knitting easy isn't it and it's kind of hard to see but you know I can see there's the uh, tiny button hole there but don't worry about it you know it's going to be kind of stretched out so the two stitch button hole is big enough for my button I don't know uh, for you and if you're not sure you know maybe you can um, make a sample when you're needing the uh, uh, swatch you can do that too anyway so every time you hit the uh, gap you just add new cast and that's about it and as I told you after the uh, buttonhole I knit five more row because buttonhole hole has to be center of the rib right that's about it so before you start knitting near the buttonhole rib you really have to think how many rows you want you already knit the you know bottom hem right so you kind of think okay so this is how many row and this is what I want this is too much this is too less stuff like that and then you have to decide which row you want to create the button hole stuff like that otherwise you know you're not 
you know, um, making the, uh, the buttonhole at right spot. And after you knit five more row or the whatever, you know, number of your row, okay, you have to bind off. And this time I didn't use the uh, stretchy cast off because it doesn't have to be stretchy. However, I don't like tight bind off. So I change my needle one size bigger. I was using four millimeter for body. No, 3.5 millimeter for the rib. So now I'm using 4.5 millimeter needle. So I can kind of, you know, bind off loosely. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to if you don't want to. It's really up to you. But I seriously don't like the tight, you know, end, wrist or bottom or neck. So, especially if you're needing for kids, they don't like tight, right? Tight end, neck or wrist. So, you should do that. There we go. That's, that's end. And now... I am going to sew the both pocket end. By the way, some people want to try to sew the pocket right, right after you knit the body part. I wouldn't recommend it because, because I don't know really, but you know, I kind of want to, you know, finish the, uh, the the project and then make sure, you know, this is the uh, right place and, you know, straight and all that. Then I want to sew. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want pocket not straight or bend or pulling something. So, you know, you should sew the pocket at the end. Well, that's my preference. Okay, there you go. And top part and the other side, I have to knit. I'm not knit. It's sewing. Okay. And finally, saw the uh, button. I used the uh, yellow yarn and spread, you know, in half or something because you know the yarn itself is too thick so I use the uh, you know one or two thread and maybe I don't really have to show you how to sew the uh, button right but I'll do that anyway so one thing I want to tell you about the uh, sewing button um, don't put the uh, button right in the middle. Tiny bit the body side. Because when you put the uh, button, the both side kind of, you know, pulling each other, right? So if you pull hard, you can see the bottom of the, uh, the, the rib. So if you put the uh, button tiny bit you know, maybe one stitch close to the uh, the body side. When you close the uh, button, perfect. So it's not right in the center. I put the uh, button. I guess that's about it. And you secure the uh, the thread. And weave the ends off. And after this, let's make sure the buttons are all lined up. I'm just making sure it's secure. Because, you know, this is knitting, right? 
So if you don't secure enough, it's going to be stretched out. So that's why, you know, I did so many times to make sure it's secure. Anyway, let's look. Again, the button is not right in the center. Little bit close to body parts. Okay, so let's put the button on and see what happened. It's a little bit tight first time, but again, once you use, see, when I pull, a little bit, you know, towards the outside, you can't really see the uh, the rib, the bottom rib, right? That's what I wanted. And again, my rib stitch count is same stitch count both side. And then I put the, uh, I create the, uh, the button hole very evenly. So the button is very lined up nice and evenly. Okay. And I love that pocket too. There we go. So what do you think about this project overall? Was it easy? or too difficult. The knitting technique I used was very simple. Some people don't like the short rows, so you know, you can skip, but it's not that hard. Anyway, um, if you have any question, especially making a plan, mat, stuff like that, please leave your comment. I'll try to help you to knit this project. Enjoy knitting. Bye for now.